Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Desperado Garage. And right behind me, I'm gonna reveal the Bourbon's engine that I finally got put together and this thing is now dialed. Spent a couple months getting this thing plumbed back together, had to get new internals. A lot of stuff was all just gummed up and destroyed so it was better to refresh it and the only thing that's still original is the block itself and the piston heads and crank shaft other than that everything else is brand new to the t stage one cam from nk performance and racing which is dr tuna mole from cleus mcfarland's you know team his group so they kind of helped me out with this. So I got long tube headers in there. No cats to a Flowmaster Super 40. I went with Speed Engineering's uh, brand with those. And then I went to a motorsports company and got um, upgraded coolant hoses, which gets rid of the plastic Y down here that obviously cracks as time goes on milling water pump, oil pump, which is high volume, um, and then EGR delete, new specter, spectry, whatever you want to call it, uh, cold air intake, BTRs, uh, valve springs, push rods, just like a whole bunch of shit that I threw in here and she's a ripper i just went and checked the oil everything like that break-in's finally done i had to get uh, the air fuels i had to get an afr gauge so i can, can get the air fuels adjusted on here and uh <clears throat> get the timing all adjusted on here as well so but other than that everything is squared away plumbed and yeah, new clutches, new radiator, like clutch fan, not clutches, but clutch fan. Well, if there is new clutches in the trans, the trans is rebuilt as well. Everything's same with the torque converter. Torque converter is brand new. If you follow me on social media, you'll see all the progress as time went on. This has been like a little bit of a project. Um, that's just been on like the sidelines because I just didn't want to reveal it because it was just going to take a lot of time and a couple months to get everything planned figure out where the parts were coming from so on and so forth especially when uh, times like today it's hard to get parts from different distributors so it's it's kind of like one thing after another after another how to get new sensors stuff like that so it took about like about a month, month and a half just to get everything uh, put together on this. It's because I also had to send it to the machine shop so they can resurface everything, put new connecting rods, a whole bunch of other stuff that need to get put in there. Freeze plugs. But yeah, so this has been an ongoing project that is now I can technically say is finished. I got spark plug boot connectors I got to put on here. So I have them in the back seat, so I'll do that at some point. But our main focus for today is what I picked up, which is a 2006 Ford Crown Vic P71 Interceptor. And she is definitely a unit. <laughs> needs, needs work. Um, picked up the center caps, which I'll probably put the, uh, a small video of me putting those on. Same with new wipers, stuff like that. But it needs a good cleaning. I took a sponge, kind of just cleaned up up here, and you can kind of see the original, you know, the white paint. Well, technically, that's not even the original color. The original color was actually um, a gray silver metallic. So. That's pretty much the original color because it was an ex-state trooper car out of Connecticut. And then I guess it went to a local PD department and then they painted it white. And then it was a marked unit 
because you still have the original antenna and light bar brackets. And I mean, the car is pretty clean. I do have the stab proofing seats in here. That I am going to explain in a second why that's in there. I picked up these because Connecticut removes all those, uh, the antennas, the spotlights, all that. But they did leave this in here and a couple other hidden features that I'll explain in a few minutes. But that is going to be the next next thing to get talked about in a second. She does have a little rust. It seems to be like right in this general area and just a little bit on the outer rockers. This I can just cut right here because this right here is solid. This is just like surface rust right here because the backside's purely solid as you can see right up in here there's nothing wrong with that so I can just cut it from about right there and just put new sheet metal in this I have no idea what even caused that because it's I can push on the back side right here this whole section right here is still good besides dirt because it kind of sank over here got a lot of rain lately but probably just take a small piece of metal cut this clean it up weld a new piece in there this up here is just surface rust easy cleanup don't really have to worry about that but the car has an odometer discrepancy um, really what it does and a couple other things but yeah just just a little bit of rust here right on the rockers this is going to come pop right off it's like a couple clips just go right along this body line clean it up send it here put a little patch here clean it up clean it up and then just repaint it i may repaint the car to the original color or just leave it white because it's been already changed on the title so uh so I don't really know how that's going to work, but we'll, we'll see. We'll cross that bridge. It is a little cold. It is a little windy today, so I do apologize in advance, but yeah. So this will be at some point at a later date, this whole section right here. Right now, the car does have a new transmission 30,000 miles ago. It was put in. New struts were put in here. Um, uh, trying to get a good spot here. Maybe you can see it. I don't know. Tires are pretty decent. I mean, have a little wear, but they're still in pretty decent shape. Um, this car does have, if you're wondering what those chrome little pieces are, right there. That is the fire suppression system still in this car. They did not remove it at all. So I plan on keeping that, I'm not gonna get rid of it. Um, also has, I guess, a new fuel tank and fuel filter, which is somewhere like right over here, the filter. But the whole other underside of the car is pretty, pretty rust free. It's just only right on the rockers and just like right here. Um, car does have uh, odometer discrepancy because I guess the motor was changed at some point. Because it says on a title that it was 150,000 uh, miles. And I guess they just went and put another one in. But overall, seats are not ripped. The third owner, which I bought it from, kept it in really, really good condition. Um, there is a button here. I mean, not a button. Um, a little airbag light or something. That's right here. It's in there. I just got to get up underneath the glove box and just slide it over, pop it back into place. Apparently, that's a common thing where it just slides back for some reason. Trunk release buttons here. Um, the center console is not in here. And I... I guess they had one in here, but they removed it. You do see where they did put the microphone, so there was a system built in here at some point. So the wirings must be 
still tucked up underneath the carpet. Um, when I got the car, the guy said that the radio that he put in still didn't work. So there's, I guess, a little bit of electrical issue with the radio or something like that. I'm not really too worried about the radio because that one has a brand new sound system in it and that one's mostly the daily driver. This one is going to be the uh, the race car type deal because you can't really take SUVs and trucks really on a lot of circuit track, autocross tracks. It's apparently prohibited but um, some some events are starting to allow trucks and SUVs in it again, which is a good thing. Um, sorry, I was holding the camera down a little bit there. But so I was trying to move the car the other day and it was getting a little hard to move the shifter past neutral. And I'm like, well, what the heck's going on? And this piece is what actually broke. And that is the aluminum housing in here. So that connects right here to this little ball piece. And that's what rotates the shifter and moves the cable. So the whole mechanism right here is what snapped. So I only have right now park, uh, reverse, and neutral on this car. So I ended up picking up a new uh, steering column used from a 2008 Crown Vic. So I'm just gonna probably swap them and then just take any parts off of this one as time goes on and just, you know, swap it back and forth, you know, whatever I need off of this one, I'll put onto this one and so on and so forth. But yeah, easy, it should be an easy like 10 minute job or something like that. What, according to the guy that pulled that one out, but probably, it's gonna take me a half hour to an hour so we'll see um there is a button right there and that must have been for the gun rack that was in here at some point because there is mounting holes right underneath the console i don't feel like moving this right now so that's just gonna stay there i do have behind this panel over here on the driver's side two buttons and i'll show you that in one second so let me switch sides also there's the fire suppression system this is the manual button and they did have the ticket light up here but i guess they removed it at some point and i do have the spotlight holes so i can just put that spotlight back in but behind this panel right here there's two buttons that were hidden and like i do is just grab it pull it back nice and carefully and I do have the where I can basically put uh, the foot pedal adjustment back in because that's what these two are. You got foot pedal and then traction stability control right here. So I could do that at any given point, but as of right now, I don't really need it because this car, I guess, never had a cage in it. But it did have the gun rack holder, which was like here. <laughs> but yeah, there's the button, and that's what would release and you know obviously operate it. Um, I do have the seat control buttons here, so it does move back and forth. And then you do have the cigarette lighter port here. There's one right in this spot. And then there's one way down here that everybody forgets. So I figured just put that one out. But yeah, this, this little piece in here is what I plan on changing today. So sorry, this video might be out of order. It's been a little long, well, a little bit of time since I've done a video because I just started a new job. So it's been kind of taking a toll on me because i kind of been doing overtime hours for the past week and a half. So I haven't really gotten much sleep and been helping out a lot of other friends with their projects. So this has kind of been on the back burner. So I do apologize for not posting daily videos. But we will we'll start getting into it here shortly. And uh, yeah, I figured just give you guys a little bit of a rundown on this car. 
I do have fenders. It is in this one right here, which that one is pretty much almost wrapped up. I just gotta get in contact with a friend of mine to do the body work on that truck there. That has brand new brakes, suspension, rear end, excuse me, had a burp there for a second. Rear end, um, coolant, you know, all that jazz and exhaust and tires, brakes, everything has been redone on that because that's my dad's truck so I want to try to get that fixed up for him. But I have paint matched fenders that match the white on this car so that'll get put on probably sometime this week as well. So yeah, um, quick little update video kind of type thing, figured just talk to you guys about it, you know, give you guys an update on that one there. I will have a video on doing some polls, stuff like that with that one coming up soon. Um, I did do a video which was an off-roading type video on the first snowstorm of the season when I first got it back. It wasn't running that great because it still needed a tune and I was still kind of like right after the break-in miles because my tuner and everybody said to do the break-in miles just we got it up and running just enough so I can just drive it around you know just very chill but now it's 100% dialed so we'll do we'll do a full full breakdown on that build over there since it's kind of hiding in the corner but yep so thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for this week on the progress of this car peace all right, what's up everybody? This is Desperado Garage, and we are working on the 2006 Crown Vic P71 police interceptor that I picked up, and we are tackling the steering column because I ended up breaking the aluminum housing that holds the shifter in place because I think the inner lock shift solenoid right here inside ended up going bad, and when I tried to shift it into drive, when I, I ended up trying to force it in there, I ended up breaking the housing. So I ended up picking up another steering column for cheap. And the guy gave me everything that I need to swap everything over. So let's get started. So first things first, I already popped off the cover to the fuse box. Next, I need to take off this plastic cover to reveal a couple bolts up underneath so I'm gonna set you guys right on the seat kind of kind of like that alrighty so there should be one bolt and a clip. All right, I see the bolt and I see the clip because the bolt holds the parking cable in. So let's get this together. <laughs> Trying to figure out the size. I don't know what the size of it is. Feels like an eight. Feels like an eight. So let's try an eight. Alright, that's a ten. Maybe it is not a 10. The hell size is that? Has to be. Okay, apparently not. There's no way it's bigger. No, that's too big.
you're kidding me. It was a seven millimeter. I'm learning as I'm explaining exactly what to take off, so just bear with me. So, it's a seven mil. right up there just gonna tap that for a second so it's a seven mil that apparently holds the parking brake cable to this plastic so just remember to remove that before you attempt to try to pull this off and break it so I got a clip that's over here I gotta pull that next Literally, it could have been warmer today, but apparently not. I'm just going to have to go grab it out of another toolbox. I'll be back. fucking in there so you know those are this Because that shit's hard and wetter than hell.
That worked just fine. I'll soak it up in the process. Alright, who thought it was a good idea to put a clip down here? <laughs> Especially one that's way oversized. Oh, shit. There we go. Don't use oversized clips. Good thing I have a brand new set of those. Is that? That was ridiculous. All right, now it should just pop forward. Yep, there we go. She's out. Just gonna slide that over there onto the passenger floor. All right. So then you get to the metal brace, and looks like you got a couple bolts to take off next. And then we'll work on getting this bottom cover off. The top cover just clips on to the bottom, so you just pry it up, and it pops right off. But let me get this off next. Alright, so seven mil what we need. These should be also probably a seven. Seems like oh. They are an eight, so Seven mil for e-brake cable. That's actually not an e-brake cable. That is the e-brake cable. Um, that's an antenna piece, I believe. So I just found that. But yeah. Eight bolts, uh, eight millimeter bolts. So let's do that now. All right, so. And these don't have to be over tight. <laughs> these are like nice and snug. Should be able to just crack these guys loose. No problem. And then just undo it by hand. Just gonna place all the bolts up there. <coughs> that one I'm gonna leave loose. Another one down here. And I got one up top. And there's one out right here. Take that off next. You guys are just gonna go back for a minute. So I can get this out. Alright, that one's out. 
I got one more that I left loose. So that's gonna be this one right here. So just hold the camera. The camera here. Gonna undo this one. At least this plate is nice and light compared to my other car that I used to have. 95 Ford Taurus. That thing was freaking a thicker metal than this. And if you get hit in the head by that, it'll knock you out or give you a concussion. <laughs> All right. So now we have access to everything up underneath. Probably just going to disconnect it right here, right from this joint. So it's just easier to slide in and out. But they pop this cover off. <laughs> Alright, so this cover, I believe, is seven. Nope, smaller. So these are a 5.5 millimeter uh, socket. And there's just three. One, two, three. Now I'm going to see if I can just change out the stuff that's in here, if it's easier, but if not, I'm probably just going to have to take out the whole thing. Right now I haven't touched anything that's electrical yet, and there's a reason for it, because I did not disconnect the battery, so make sure you disconnect the battery before you touch any of this, but I'm only doing bolts that hold plastic and just the metal casings in. It's not really a big priority right now. All right, that one's out. And that one fell right next to the camera, luckily. Get this one out. Slide it on a little bit over the shaft for the steering column adjustment. All right. Now we can access everything else. But yeah, that's that's what actually broke on mine was right here. Always fun, but I also want to check something else out. This is spring still in there. Yep, the spring's in there. That's grease that I just touched, so that's that's even better. Cable cable looks good. So I don't think that's the lat. Might be able to just change this piece out right here. You would think. I should just change it all together because of this. This is your interlock shift solenoid right here. But I was able to move this down into gear until I got down to neutral and then it was kind of 
getting tough, so. trying to think so I mean it wouldn't be too bad just to pop it right off of there and just slide it up and out because is the other one still bolted it is okay. so I can just undo it from here I would say I can do undo it right here, right behind it. Just keep this separate. Because I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but if I need to change that, I can always change that at some point. But, what is it, like, one, two, four bolts? Actually, I don't even have to take it from there. I could just take it from here. Literally pop this right off. Just one screw. Should be able to slide that. slide okay so I guess I well actually should be able to just pop it right in because if I just undo that undo the bolts this will just slide forward slide it back on yeah that'll work all right all right give you guys a quick update pulled the whole column out took it very carefully this clip that goes to this uh, turn signal, the hazards, make sure you slip a screwdriver and push here to pull it out. Other than that, the rest are pretty straightforward, easy quick disconnects. Make sure you disconnect this guy that was held in there. I just took it off the input shaft so it's easy to take and you know slide on and off. This one stays together. This is the one that goes up underneath and so forth. But, to give you guys a better perspective, this is what exactly broke. I mean, I can just unbolt it here and just change this whole mechanism and it'll be good to go. But I think there's something internally wrong with the, the piece in there. So, better off just changing it and then it'll just take off whatever parts I need. So, this one, I just gotta undo this shaft here. And put this right in and that's it so I uh, couldn't get the ste other steering column in because this decided to come off so what I ended up doing was I ended up taking it, this piece that broke off but I still had to pull the whole column all the way down and I was able to fix this and get the cable working so now I got all gears that work again so all fixed now I just got to button it back up again So brake booster's fine, master cylinder's fine. These lines all looked okay. 
this one right here looked like somebody spliced it and it rusted to the point where it blew out and why it was dripping so much down the whole EBS block and I thought it was the pump luckily it's not so we got a new line bent it as best as I could got the old one out of here luckily that was that was a struggle getting it out of here bent it up over down then it, it stripped to the thing back here right right there it stripped and we couldn't get out of the hose luckily that bolt came off in the the nut to the caliper both grabbed it while it was off and luckily it unthreaded and finally came off so it just saved me 43 bucks on getting a hose which I might have to get a hose at some point but as of right now I don't need one but later down in the road might change it but as of right now it's fine so that's all fixed but still has to get bled all four wheels but at least it stops now so that's a plus and then also clean the inside and outside of the car well in here outside but inside is clean I still gotta wash it and change these fenders